BBC Radio 5, 9.09 and 6.93 a.m. The Sports Network. It's 11 o'clock and this is John Champion with the latest sports news. Our next bulletin is at midday. Hi, this is Johnny Walker. Welcome along to the very first edition of This Family Business. For the next hour and a half, we look at bank holidays. Are they worth all the hassle? British beaches. Just how bad are they and what can be done to improve them? How much pocket money should children have? And we also take a look at how the family itself is changing. The only reason I came in to do this show today is because bank holidays are brilliant at the BBC, right? There's never anybody here. But it's a total madhouse. The place is crawling with BBC executives, there's cameramen here, journalists. Must be something special going on, I'm not sure what it is. Anyway, bank holidays, how's yours going? Is it worth the hassle, the traffic jams and all the rest of it? Or should there be more bank holidays? And how do most people actually spend the day? Our reporter Oliver Jones investigates and starts off with some notorious bank holidays from the past. Just because we get around Talking about my generation Things ain't do look awful Talking about my generation I hope I die before I get old What fun do the nods get out of smashing oh, things up? we get a kick out of it, you know It's something to do, there's nothing much else to do on a Sunday Bank holiday money, what else can we do? So we smash it up What they should do is put a section on the beach Put the Muslim rocks in them, let them, have, let them fight it out the amongst them and will be okay. Why do the mods find such great delight in smashing things up? Oh, it's great fun, isn't it? What's funny about it? Oh, I think it's hilarious. Give me a free hand. How would the team deal with the mods and rockers who smashed up Clapton last weekend? Russell Braddon, come on. First thing I think to do is to smash up all their motorbikes so that they're, they're irretrievably done in, then find them so much that those that can be mended uh, can't be paid for so that the, the finance companies reclaim the bikes Finally, send someone from Clacton round to the homes of the parents of all the kids and smash their windows in too so that they know what it's like. Apart from that, I have no idea. Long gone are the days when bank holidays were associated with gangs of teenagers smashing up seaside towns and incensed members of the panel advocating tit-for-tat violence. Nowadays, it seems to be a chance either to be thoroughly lazy or a day to get those things done that you've put off for so long. Oh, I'll get, try and get out on my bike in the countryside, get away from the smoke and the rushing about. It's a matter of catching up with domestic chores, like going down a laundry and getting something to eat and, and stuff. Uh, I think everybody should keep off the roads if they can. It's just too crowded. Uh, I'd prefer to stay at home, catch up with the garden or whatever. The weekend they get up early to enjoy the weekend. The bank holiday, they can stay in bed, then get up and enjoy the day, sort of thing. Do you know what I mean? I love it. I think that bank holidays are like Christmas, Easter, the lot. I love holidays. Sit and watch the telly, I swear. <laughs> Just like a Sunday, innit? Uh, hopefully go out for a day trip or go out with friends or just laze around really, you know, just a break from the norm. It's like, oh, freedom, you know, go and do something. There was a time not so long ago that bank holidays were the only days off that many workers got. Doris Bailey always went down to South End. Just our one day a year, and we loved it. We used to pray for a fine day, and if we were lucky, we got it. And it was lovely, we could sit down on the little bit of sand, and if we were lucky and the tide was in, we could paddle. And then when the pubs opened, we went along the front to a pub called the Ivy House, and they had a balcony. And you could sit up on this balcony at tables and lean over and watch the firm's outings and all the women and the men dancing and jigging, doing knees up Mother Brown. And it was really all packed into that one day. Didn't we have a lovely time the day we went to Bangor? A beautiful day we had lunch on the way and over under a pound, you know, that on the way back. Up 
Before 1871, there were only two national holidays a year in England and Wales, Christmas Day and Good Friday, to enable workers to attend church. Then a member of Parliament, Sir John Lubbock, introduced the Bank Holidays Act. Martin Carmel is the Senior Deputy Secretary for the British Bankers Association and Britain's foremost authority on the subject of bank holidays. I asked him why these national holidays had been called bank holidays. Sir John Lubbock called them bank holidays in the bill because he felt that if he was to introduce into Parliament a bill that actually gave everybody four days holiday a year, it would never get through Parliament at that time. So what he decided to do was to call it the Bank Holidays Bill, which gave the impression that it was only aimed at banks and that its sole purpose was to give banks the opportunity of closing on four days in a year. However, everybody realised that if the banks were closed and they were being given a holiday, they should have a holiday as well. And everybody across the board decided they should have a holiday on those bank holidays too. Indeed, the story goes that the workers of Britain named the August bank holiday St Lubbock's Day in gratitude for this philanthropic act. Keith Waterhouse says in the mail this morning if we all took our bank holidays on different days we wouldn't have traffic jams, but we don't, so we will. In Hampshire, roadworks on the... Compton Unfortunately, Central in Day, recent times, bank holidays have become synonymous with monstrous congestion on the roads making motorways impassable, and with drivers boiling in their cars, tempers get frayed. You ever been a 12-mile tailback on the motorway and the guy behind you starts beeping his horn? As if all the people in front are going to go, Oh, what to do, what to do? You're so guilty now, wasting this man's time, don't you? But I'll tell you what, mate, if we all pull over, right, you can go, go on. It's become traditional to leap in your car and race off to the nearest stretch of sea. Sometimes I take a day off and uh, take the kids out somewhere. What happens is uh, we try to get down there, then we get diverted elsewhere, you know, to, uh, say, perhaps, uh, Flesh Light Thought Park or one of the adventure grounds and so forth. But uh, I like to spend the time with the kids as much as possible. Every time I've been, it's like took hours to get back in the car, and it's not really worth it. So I mean, the seaside, British seaside, I don't really agree with anyone. I don't think it agrees with me. Australians, any holiday, we'll go to the beach. doesn't matter if it's religious or anything. We go to the beach. <laughs> if we've got a day off, <laughs> use the beach as a fact. However, not everybody bothers with bank holidays or even likes them. It's another day for me. Yeah, because I'm, I'm a skilled Brit, though. I don't work in seven days. And if I have one day off, I feel like I want to do it the next day, see? I, I wouldn't miss it for anything, I definitely, but I mean, to be fair to the government, I mean, it's, it's a waste of government's money, you know, no, it's actually, I think it's too many bank holidays, actually. Yeah. It's cut down. Monday, Monday, so good to me. Oliver Jones reporting now on bank holidays. And he mentioned beaches. Uh, if you've been to the beach this weekend, I wonder how it was, how clean was it, and how confident were you swimming in the water? We'll investigate the state of British beaches a bit later on in the program. This family business on Radio 5 at 11.14.